Welcome, I'll be reacting to UFO, the episode ESP. This is not a market substitute. Please support the original. <laughs> okay, I love the shoes. It's not Straker, really? The men are so stylish on this show. Is he okay? Seems a bit distracted by something. Maybe by his amazing car. I have been to see- She'll be better tomorrow. Who? Your mother. You saw her today. Oh God, this is awful. <laughs> oh, I see what the title is about now. The doctor said it would pass. And if it doesn't, have you thought about that? Don't, John. It can't stay like this. That would be too much. All right, so presumably he's kind of aware of things that he wasn't actually present for. I'm not sure why she isn't being more supportive. If that was my partner, I'd be like, this is so cool. Right now, I'd be like, when is this migraine going away? Please tell me, I want to know. I don't get why she is so upset. Her presumably husband has superpowers. You just can't make some people happy, can you? Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you. He already knows. The doctor's got to do something. I don't know how long I can stand it. I mean, look at him. He's clearly suffering. She should be like, this is me. It's okay. Like... <sighs> Won't you relax and tell me all about it? Not sure whatever this is is helping. This seems to have become a weekly phenomenon. There's a Stargate episode. <laughs> I'm sorry. They have an alien piece of technology that causes a normal civilian like this to be connected to Stargate Command, and he sees all the mission reports. And so he then knows everything about Stargate and their whole operation just in his mind. And he is going slowly mad and everyone around him is like done with him. And he finally drags himself up to Stargate Command and is like, Everyone in my life has turned me away, and I keep seeing your missions, and I can't stop. Andy and I are going to my mother's for a while. If you have even the slightest interest in saving our marriage, you'll see someone who can help you. You ruined my life. It was a really compelling episode, actually, and I'm getting the feeling it was based on this episode because we have here a civilian who I bet is going to be starting to see the shadow UFO situation and you can see his family already pushing him away and he's slowly coming apart so I feel like he's going to show up on their doorstep at Shadow and be like I know everything about you I'm just guessing here course still varying speed now zero decimal eight five and reducing how long before Commander Straker comes on duty what's the panic right now <laughs> a UFO Missed. Positive. Contact lost. Moon base to shadow control. Contact lost, but how? I, I, I don't think you did. I didn't see you get hit. Thank you. Moon base to shadow control. It's back. I have another contact, sir. The same one. The same one? It's through moon base defenses. Heading for Earth. Thank you. That was a really cute touch of them pulling out the cigar and then the UFO shows back up and Alec is like, Ugh, and he puts the cigar back in. That was really, that was good. <laughs> but now I think the alien is fighting to regain control. Oh, that would make sense. It's, it's going too fast. Alert the mobiles. <laughs> we haven't seen the mobiles in a little while. Mobile 2 to control. Pass your instructions. This is Red Alert. I don't think I've seen this uniform before, or if I did, I forgot. I like it. The kind of gray mottled turtleneck with the shadow logo. It looks very comfortable. I want a detailed survey of the area. If there is a specific target in there, I want to know about it. Oh, good idea. See if they could figure out what they want, anticipate it, or who. Kitty! 
Oh. I love how many cats there are on this show. Oh. Actually, I want a green bedroom someday. This is like life goals here. Has your visitor arrived yet? Visitor? Wait, visitor as in UFO visitor? Hello. What a beautiful cat. I mean, what's it after? What could it want in the ESP of the wilderness of trees and bracken? That's the only thing I can think of. He'll know this is Shadow, though. Keep Channel 3 open. Military maneuvers. Military maneuvers. Yes, sir. You live. Yes, yes, I live a couple of miles over there. This must be difficult for him because he knows exactly what's going on. So he's probably really worried about his wife. But he can't tell them that he knows. So he's probably just sitting by his car, like. <laughs> At least the cat is okay, I think. Crash landing velocity, then safe landing velocity. Now it hits a mm. house. Whoa. What is going on? And where's his wife? Does she make it out? No, I don't buy that, Alec. For a while it was Neither out of control, I. yes. But just before impact, it seemed to be fine. Sheer coincidence. The house mm -hmm. just happened to be in the way. Well, you I could be so. right. But there's enough doubt in my mind to make me want to see the place for myself. That's a lot of damage. I don't know if she made it. We found it embedded in Foster's mobile. At least he was luckier than the co-driver. Oh, dear. What about the woman? She couldn't have known anything about it. It must have been instantaneous. Um, she was... Um, I guess they'll just say it's a failed military experiment. I don't know. Nice touch to have the bouquet still sitting there. But was the cat okay? We haven't heard definitively yet. That's a lot of stamps. Did Mr. Weasley send this? Good morning, sir. <laughs> what if it's the ESP guy and he wrote a script about Shadow? Oh, Ooh, he has toast now. This is the food episode. Report for Moonbase briefing first thing in the morning. Yes, sir. In the morning? That means he's having toast for dinner. Well, why don't you open it and find out? <laughs> Let's see. Cast of characters, Straker. What? <laughs> Was I right? Has Alec Freeman left the building? No, sir. He's with me now. Well, have him come back down here immediately. Yes, sir. Ah, oh, there goes to stay off. I like that guy in the back. See that? Let me go back. Watch this guy. He's like, did you just leave? I love it. Even the background characters are excellent. A Croxley phoned here for you earlier today. <gasps> Well, I mean, I guess that's not surprising. He'd know they were coming. You know, it's madness, don't you, coming here without security? You have no choice. Listen, Alan. He would know. Go back to the house. Overcome your anxiety. Oh, no. Face the problem. Oh, thank goodness. Thank you so much. The cat is okay. Oh, I was so worried. Why couldn't they do that for us earlier? Do you use a shoulder holster, Commander? Please. I just want to call out, in a good way, the set designers here. They showed us a bouquet earlier. This is the same bouquet. However, it's wilted now, so it shows that time has passed. It's so subtle, and yet somebody had the forethought to put that in. Very nice touch. It's this attention to detail that's one of the reasons I like this show. They're using you. Can't you see why? It's four minutes to twelve. You die at midnight, Croxley. They got there at 9.30. They wandered around the house for about 15 minutes. Are you telling me this conversation lasted from 9.45 to midnight? Somebody on the continuity script team dropped that one. You say you want someone to help you. Mm -hmm. 
Our planet is dying. Our national resources are exhausted. We must come to Earth. We must come to Earth to survive. Whoa, he's connected to the UFO. Give me the gun. We mean no harm to peoples of Earth. Why do you attack us? Foster? Yeah, that was Foster. He probably overheard what was going on. Why didn't he see that coming, though? He knew. Last few seconds, Croxley regained control of his own mind. It's the only way out of the alien's control. Poor guy. What brought Paul Foster to that house? And Croxley? The doctor that told Foster to go to the house, we saw that blip on the monitor. I think the ESP guy managed to reach out and bring him in with what little control he had. I like how these episodes are unafraid of going to a fairly dark place. This is a show that could really easily turn extremely campy. I mean, look at those Moonbase outfits. They're adorable, but not exactly serious drama material there. However, the stories really are. This one particularly, looking at how some humans are inherently born with, I guess you could say, more in-tuned abilities than others. And most of the time it's fairly minor. Like we saw that flashback where he knew what someone had for lunch. And then the aliens were able to tune into that and amplify it and use it to their own ends. He ended up fighting back as much as he could. You could see how it was affecting him and how he was struggling. I really wish that his wife had been there for him. I mean, it's tragic what happened to her, but she really was not helping. I'm sorry, in those early scenes that we saw of her. But the way that he was able to bring Foster in and manage to keep himself from doing the alien's bidding as long as possible really shows a strength of character. And it was interesting to see that little opening into the alien's thought process for a minute of how they see the humans as aggressive. It's like, well, we're just trying to survive. Our planet is dying. We've come here for resources. We're not taking that much, you know, just a stray organ here and there, not much. That's the way they see it. And of course, Earth is like, um, yeah, you're, you're murdering people. I think we're well within our rights to destroy your spaceships when you arrive. But it makes me kind of wonder what would happen if they could just sit down in a room together and try and figure something out, some kind of a treaty. I think the show got canceled after one season, so I don't think we'll get there, but I feel like that would have been the end of the show, is finally getting a proper treaty with the aliens and figuring out what they can do as a compromise. I thought the set designs were really good, both at the hospital, with all those beautiful pastel colors, and then the house with its green wallpaper, both when it was put together and then after it had been destroyed. And I mentioned in the reaction itself, that bouquet touch, I absolutely loved that, having her kind of putting it together. And then he sees it in the burned out house as kind of a representation of losing her and then having them all come back and it's just wilted and they have the whole scene of the final confrontation in front of that bouquet that kind of represented Stella and how she had wilted as a result of this whole conflict with the UFOs. I thought the symbolism there was just gorgeous. Whoever came up with that, excellent job. It's so subtle. I don't think they called it out at all in the episode. You just had to be paying attention. The writing quality continues to be outstanding. I can't help but wonder if this show came out in modern times, it would be a huge sensation. It's more colorful, which is something I actually really appreciate because so many modern sci-fi shows, I'm sorry, they're so dreary. There are lots of grays and blacks and browns and just, this is a serious science fiction show. Everything has to be dark and shadowy and monotone. So thank you, UFO, for proving that you can have a colorful, vibrant set design and also 
a really thought-provoking show.